Brave Benser Musashi. Before even playing this game, it was a name I was actually quite familiar with. And I have to say, the quality of this title does justice to the man himself. Now this story is 100% completely and totally factually accurate to the life and times of Miyamoto Musashi. You may not have heard of him, but he was basically the greatest swordsman who ever lived. He was famous for never losing a duel, as well as fighting with a carved or that one time. Seriously, look the guy up, he's awesome. Basically, he's the single greatest sword master who ever lived. You know, even before me, although to be fair, I spent most of my life studying his style, so, you know, it kind of makes some sense. Now, as Musashi, you are transported to a different dimension and basically given these instructions. You have to save the world by getting the magical sword of legend, except you're Musashi, you created the one strategically viable twin sword style, so it's actually the second magical sword of legend, and then you have to go find five scrolls of the elements to help reinforce your knowledge of fighting and the world around you to eventually take on an evil empire where everyone is named after a different beverage. Oh, and go save Princess Flan because reasons. This game kicks off into one of the best tutorials I've seen on the system, and you know what, I'm so enamored with how well they did the tutorial, I'm just gonna show you tutorial footage because that's how kick-ass it was. First, it gives you a little bit of story, hands you your sword, and says go. Your mission? To go and rescue your second magical sword of legend, and then go save the world. And in order to do this, you have to go fight some enemies, learn your basic skills, go through some very basic, admittedly, puzzles, but puzzles nonetheless, go through an amazing chase sequence, and then finish with a, admittedly, kind of tricky three-phase boss fight. Seriously, the only thing about the tutorials that isn't really all that great is the actual tutorializing because it's done purely through text boxes, as opposed to teaching you naturally just by the way the levels are designed. But to be fair, this is also PlayStation 1, and increasing the number of buttons necessary to play the game does complicate things quite a fair bit. Now, you might make fun of me for calling this a factually accurate historical documentary, but there is some actual basis in the facts surrounding Musashi the character, based on the actual swordsman. For example, one of Musashi's greatest skills in this game is the ability to throw his basic sword fusion and assimilate his opponent's abilities. This was actually derived from the actual Musashi's practices of throwing his companion sword, as well as his ability to naturally learn new abilities by watching the world around him. Now, he has a lot more different abilities in this game as well. Of course, you have the ability to steal your opponent's abilities, which gives him a ton of variants. They're mostly used to solve basic environmental puzzles. That said, because there's such a wide variety of different skills you can pick up from this assimilation ability, it ends up making gameplay feel fresh, pretty much non-stop, which is a really tricky thing to do, and they pulled it off perfectly. In addition to that, you've got Lumina, your giant second magical sword of destiny, which does a lot more damage, but you have to charge it up. So, in order to utilize this ability well, you have to study your opponents and find the openings in their attacks, which I think makes it a well-utilized weapon, because it's effectively more powerful than your standard katana, so allowing you to use it non-stop would kind of completely break the game in terms of difficulty. So requiring you to pick your moments as to when to use it sort of balances out a lot better, and I really appreciated that in terms of difficulty. But that's not the end of Musashi's various abilities. He can find different equipment, as well as the scrolls, which teach him new abilities, as well as give him different ways to traverse his environment. Seriously, this game did that excellently. And there's not really much for me to complain about in this regard. But this is also a square game, which means there's going to be some RPG elements. And despite this being sort of the time where Square was experimenting with different genres, this one is more of an action RPG than it may initially appear. Because there is a little bit of stat management in levels, but you also have to manage sleep, if you can believe it. Essentially, as time progresses, Musashi will get fatigued, and as he gets fatigued, he will end up being less and less effective in combat. So in order to alleviate this, you'll have to go sleep at an inn, which will heal you fully, but at the cost of money. Alternatively, you could just go to sleep out in the field for no reason, but you do risk getting attacked, so it is a strategic choice you have to make. But overall, while it's a little bit strange to have to sleep in order to keep your character in fighting shape, as well as get around the day-night cycle in order to visit shops or whatever, I think it worked well for what it needed to do. The final core mechanic of gameplay is villagers, because they've been captured and you have to go rescue them. But the nice thing is, once you rescue them, they return to town, 
they go about their lives, and you get a bit of a stat boost for helping them, which is great. Basically, they're on your way and you're gonna have to get them anyway, so there's really no reason to ignore them. And the bonuses they provide and services they provide later are massively, massively beneficial. Overall, the gameplay is incredibly varied, is constantly kept fresh with new abilities that are either temporary or allow you to scale the environments permanently, and combat is pretty well done. The only thing about gameplay I don't necessarily like is it is, once again, a 3D environment controlled with a D-pad, and no, there's no way to even use that, like, PS3 faux-emulated control stick function. Has anyone actually gotten that to work on anything? Because I've never had luck with that. So yeah, while controlling your character might be a little less precise than you'd like, it still works well for what it needs to do, and overall, I gotta say the gameplay was pretty well done. Now the presentation to Brave Fencer Musashi is, like the gameplay, solid. Each and every one of the individual characters, from the villagers to your character, to the bosses, to even the standard enemies, all look striking, and they make their presence known, and that's well done. The environments are fairly well done, and I feel they do utilize Musashi's abilities quite excellently. So overall, this game is visually quite well done. And the audio design is fantastic. First and foremost, there is voice acting, which while campy in some parts is expertly done in others, you've got Mona Marshall rocking Musashi quite expertly, and of course you have Sandy Fox playing the fair princess Flan. In terms of the music, this game is so incredibly kick-ass. First and foremost, you have an incredibly well-produced theme song that gets nuanced in several different ways. Even in the tutorial alone, you get like three different variations of the main theme song, which is pretty cool and the other songs work fairly well as well. Ultimately, the audio design to this game is pretty excellent, similarly to the visual design and the gameplay design. Basically, this game is awesome in pretty much every field, and it has virtually everything you could ever want in an awesomely made game, except bad surf rock. If you want bad surf rock, you have to get the sequel, which, uh, just don't get the sequel, get this one. Or alternatively, get the sequel, but get this one first because it's way better. Now, if you want to get a copy of Brave Fencer Musashi, well, if you're in North America, it's not that easy because it has not only retained its price, but it's actually gone up in price a fair bit. It tends to sit at about $60, which... Is pretty expensive but I gotta say this game definitely worth it in my opinion if you happen to live in Japan land or even Korea for some reason this game is available on PSN pretty readily unfortunately it was never released in the PAL region and North America never got a downloadable copy is something that does make me incredibly bitter but I would say that while $60 is insanely expensive for a PS1 title this one would actually be worth it I think because ultimately, Brave Fencer Musashi is just an excellently made game, both in terms of gameplay, story, and presentation. The characters are memorable, gameplay is excellent, and the game is just beautiful. And honestly, while I don't have much of a PS1 catalog, like seriously, I think my entire PS1 catalog is like maybe half a dozen to a dozen games, I can say with full confidence Brave Fencer Musashi is the best PS1 game I've ever played, because it combines fun RPG elements with a solid story, some rather innovative mechanics, an amazing adventure, all wrapped around a personal hero of mine. And you know what, if nothing else, the fact that I even got to review this game means I got to drop some Musashi facts on you. And I haven't exactly spent three quarters of my life studying his fighting style for nothing. So it's nice I got to put some of that to use. In the end, if you want an excellently made game, grab Brave Fencer Musashi, because it is one of the best games on the PS1, and honestly, might be one of the best games Square has ever made. Although, to be fair, seeing what they've made since, it's not exactly hard now, is it? If I'm reincarnated, I want to be Musashi again. <laughs>